Dynamic blessings to all of you today, as this is Friday, the 24th. And, no, it's the 23rd, actually. And uh, this is my fifth IG Live for the week. Every day I promised you I would bring you an activist, a creator, an artist, a healer, to talk about embracing our sacred yes. And we're to continue with that. And also a joyful reminder that if you did not yet tap into the Into the Now that took place on my birthday, July 21st, you still have an opportunity to do that at no cost. So you just come and uh, register and, and, and take full advantage of the magnificent presentations, the conversations, and all that good stuff. Here we have Lauren London with me this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time zone you're in. I'm in a, a late afternoon. Are you, are you in, back in Los Angeles? Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, that's very good, because you've been a world traveler for a moment. You know, I, 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 the world is ours. We're supposed to see it, right? Can you we, hear me, Rev? I can hear you, yes. OK. I was listening to my director at the same time. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get started, I want to let people know a little bit about, about who you are. OK. You know, we, we, we have. Um, I mean, a lot of people know who you are because uh, obviously you're, you're a native of Los Angeles. Your career kind of like took off after starring in the film ATL. Since then, you've appeared in uh, Without Remorse, you know, with, with, yeah. with, with, with Brother Michael there. Uh, yeah. This Christmas, Next Day Air, Tyler Perry's Medea, Big Happy Family, among others. Guest appearances include Entourage, 90210, Single Ladies in the Game. And from what I understand, you're currently working on a production on the Netflix miniseries, True Story. Yeah. Alongside Kevin Hart, Wesley Stipes, and I know you're developing a whole bunch of uh, projects as director and producer. So your, your whole creative frequency has emerged in a very powerful way. And um, so somewhere along the line, you know, you know our, for the next few minutes, we want to talk about embracing the sacred yes. And somewhere within, and, and, and everybody has their own definition of what it means to say yes. Everyone has their own definition and perspective on what it means to rise up out of the fears and the doubts and the worries and to step into the next level of greatness, which you have done and which you are doing. And, you know, we cannot uh, overlook the fact that your beloved Nipsey Hussle was taken off the planet. And, and, and you're raising children, you're a mother, and uh, you, had to, you had to embrace the sorrow of that tragedy mm -hmm. and continue to say yes as mom and, and stewards of your family and, and, and your career unfolding. So I know it's been a minute, and obviously we had an opportunity to work, with, work together um, when, when, that, when that occurred. So with everything that's going on in your life, you know, how would you define your yes factor? You know, I think every day you make that choice. For me, it's like an everyday intention to say yes, because so much of my life in the past two years has really just been about surviving, especially after something so soul crushing and traumatic. And, you know, it, it really made me question everything I thought I knew. Yes. And so, I was just in the mode of surviving and I wanted to not just survive anymore. I wanted to like thrive. Absolutely. And so I made the decision that every day I would just take the smallest steps, even baby steps of just today, I'm going to say yes to life. I'm going to be open to whatever life has to give me at any moment. And I think I just, I am intentional with saying yes every day. Yes. Because I know what it's like to say no. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's stagnation. Yes. <laughs> and so t tell, tell everyone, you know, who Nipsey Hussle was to you. Oh, yeah, wow. the, world, the world has a, a big view of him as this prolific uh, musical artist, hustler, seeking to change not only the area of Crenshaw, but just, you know, to embrace the whole world. What, what did he mean to you and to the world? Well, to me, he was um, one of my um, greatest teachers. 
um, and he was um, um, very, he was safe. He was like my safe space. Mm. And um, he encouraged me. He saw things in me that I was afraid to see. And with him not being physically here, it like it pushes me to do all the things he told me to do, to push uh. through all the things he told me I had inside of me. I want to do them now when I used to be too afraid to do them. So he's like motivating you from the other side. For sure. A lot of my, um, yeah, yes, a thousand, a thousand percent. Uh, um, a lot of my inspiration comes from him. Mm -hmm. So um, when you look over the arc of your career, I mean, everybody knows you from ATL. I mean, you just, just popped on the screen and, you know, and then you've done these other programs, other, other projects as well. What would you say you had to overcome within yourself to like step into the next iteration of, of Lauren? Self-doubt, um, not feeling worthy or not feeling good enough to um, have, you know, the good parts of life. I think even my, you know, in childhood, it was uh, very rough for me. And um, I was so used to struggling and I was so used to, you know, bad things happening that I kind of got in that mind frame that things were just always going to be hard and bad. And I think it had a lot, it, it really, it really, it really messed up my self-worth. I didn't think I was worthy of the goodness of life. And um, I know going to Agape at a young age, I've been going, going to Agape since I was 10. Wow. Um, listening to you, investing in myself, reading a lot, um, praying a lot, creating a very intimate relationship with God helped me reaffirm who I am in God. Because mm. I was looking outside of myself for my self-worth and realizing <laughs> that, you know, all that is internal and that God has placed me on earth for a reason, big or small in whoever's eyes, but it's a purpose and a reason. And that gives me self-worth that I mean something to God. Yes, God that's powerful. God. That's powerful. And the reason I'm, I, I appreciate what you're saying, because oftentimes people look at people such as yourself, they see a modicum, modicum of success and they think that you're different. You think that you're special than other people, but they don't understand that you had demons too. Self-doubt, lack of self-worth, uh, and then you, you you tack on that. I mean, your, your childhood being being uh, kind of sketchy in certain areas of your life, and then you tack on that your beloved gets killed, you know, and you're you're, you're left to raise your children, you know, by yourself. And I just wanted people to kind of get an understanding that that you walk through life just like everyone else. You know, there's tragedies, there's things that occurred in childhood. Uh, there's, uh, you still have to keep going. So it wasn't like people are specially uh, uh, you know, uh, anointed to be, to be special. You have to work at this. Yeah, I work on it every day. And every day, of course, I still like, how do I do this? You know what I mean? What am I to do? How am I to do it? And instead of looking outside of myself, I just go within. And I think me, I'm 36 years old now. That's what I've learned on this healing journey is to go within and to create or to invest in my relationship with God. I love that. I love that. Invest in my relationship with God. Because you know what? The dividends <laughs> are remarkable, you know, when you invest in your relationship with God. And so you're still a baby. You're 36. Am 36. I a baby? <laughs> You're a baby. I mean, you, you got, That's you raised me. Rev. I've lived through a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, know, I know you have a lot of experience yeah. in 36 years. I mean, yes. and you have two children. Yes, you know, and, and one is about to be in the sixth grade. So and I one is about like to be in the sixth baby. grade. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so so three and six is nine, so you're at the end of a cycle in your life, and you're about mm. to, you got to begin another cycle in your life. So two things I want to say. One, you don't have to ever mention your age again to anyone because you know you're a timeless being and, mm -hmm. and people over the years have asked me my age and i say listen i'm not interested in age and age isn't interested in me you know <laughs> and i can remember satchel page because he pitched in the major leagues for many years well past 
what some people would say is an individual's prime. And they, they, they would say to him, you know, how old are you? And he would say, how old would you be if you didn't know how, how old you was? You know what I mean? <laughs> Pick that age and stay with it. Because the mind will, will, will wrap itself around that. And then the other part is, you know, you're, you're, you're at the end of a cycle. So I want to ask you two questions. You know, one is, what would you say now to the, to the younger Lauren? You know, the Lauren that, you know, self-doubting, uh, lack of self-esteem, you know, carrying the burden of events that occurred in your childhood. If you, if you could go back and talk to her, mm. what would you say to her now? Well, first I would tell her that her circumstances and conditions of what are around her is not her, it's, it's not a reflection of her, in, it's not her. I nice. think I took so much of the chaos around me and, and took it as if like I deserved it and I made it my fault, I internalized it. I would tell her that it, it's not her fault mm -hmm. and that, um, I think I would just encourage my younger self and remind her of how special she is to God mm -hmm. and how big or small, however she wanted to show up on earth, that she's just meant to be here. Mm -hmm. Now, that's powerful. Um, I think it's really important that people do know that, that whatever circumstances they're in or situations, to come to an understanding that it's, it's not somebody's fault. Ignorance is always to blame. It's always, mm -hmm. we don't personalize things. And so you would go back and you would tell young Lauren, it's not your fault. This, this circumstance doesn't define you. Yes. You're bigger than the circumstance. Absolutely. That's exactly what you said and much better than me. But no, <laughs> I would, yeah, because I think as children, as young adults, you internalize all the events and all the, you know, what the adults are doing around you, you, and that hurt you, you take it as like, what did I do? Is this happening? Because I'm not, you know, so I think, yeah, I'm in alignment with what you said. Yeah. And well, I'm, I'm just reflecting back what you said. <laughs> <laughs> what you said is much better than me. <laughs> Young, ageless, timeless, Lauren. <laughs> mm, I receive. Now, um, as I said, you're, you're at the end of a cycle now, you know, th th three and six, it's a, it's a nine, which is a, a, a cycle of completion in the beginning of a new cycle. What would you say you're heading into right now? What is, what is your spirit say that you're, you're stepping into as the next vision and version of Lauren? I think I'm meeting myself much, really deeply, like my relate, I, I used to think I had this like super clear relationship with the divine but it wasn't until recently until everything i went through and all my thoughts had to kind of unfold in a way i think i'm stepping into a space of like real clarity like i really want to know god for real mm -hmm. you know i don't want it to be a theory anymore i want it to be like yeah and, yeah. I, and I want to carry that, you know, I, I, I would like to carry that. I would like to be of service in this phase of my life. I think, you know, in my previous years, I, I've been very into my ego. Mm -hmm. And I would like to be of service in this phase of my life. Yeah, that's beautiful because the ego, that's a slippery, slippery slope for a lot of artists and a lot of creators and a lot of people that are in front of the crowd. Their ego can get the best of them and they actually can put on a superiority airs, think they're better than other people. You know, I, I, it's, 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 a, it's a tough thing to navigate. Yeah. So for you to be able to, to, to have a moment of reflection and say, yeah, in, my, in my younger days, you know, the ego would get in there, but now I want to be in service to God. I mean, that, I think that's big. I really do. I, and I want to be intentional. Like, I, I want to be clear on what I'm doing and I want to be very present where I'm at. Yeah. And I really appreciate a lot of the young artists that are coming up now. They don't uh, have any hesitation in using the G word. They don't, yes. have, you know, they don't have any hesitation in saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to be connected with God. And, yes. and, I, and, and everything that I do, I want it to be a reflection of God. Whereas in the past, that was kind of like, uh, for some people, a sign of weakness, you know, 
And, and, and please, I want people to understand that we're talking about the presence of God. We're not talking about religion. Yeah. We're talking about religiosity. We're not talking about old school religion where there's a God that's going to condemn you to hell and, 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 and call you a poor sinner. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're not into that. We're talking about the real God. The, the presence that's All never love. absent, yeah, presence the of love and of beauty and intelligence. And so I love it when I see you and other artists. You know, I had uh, my boy Omarion, you know, on, on the summit recently, and, and he has no hesitation either about, you know, he's here for the presence of God now in, mm -hmm. in this time of life. And there's a lot of artists that are coming forward that um, don't want to just be like a showpiece. They, they want to show up for God as well as do their art, their singing, their dancing, their acting, their create, whatever their creative urge is. So it, just, it gives me um, more than hope when, when people are stepping up like you and saying, you know what, I'm here for God, period. Yeah. All the way, because I know what it feels like when you have a plan in your mind for life and, life, and, and something else happens and all you have is God. Yeah, because in, in, and because of what you have grown through, not your childhood, plus the, the, the sudden death of your beloved, you know, there's a statement that I like to use uh, is that oftentimes religious people are trying not to go to hell, but spiritual people have already been there. You know? mm -hmm. they, they've gone through so much that now they are aware what heaven is. It's not just a place that you go to when you die. Yeah. Heaven is a state of consciousness. Yeah. You know, and so you, you have a lot of uh, heavenly moments, even though you've been through hell. Mm-hmm. Because of your love of God. Yeah, no, I've been through hell and back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so you, 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 you know the real God, not the God just in the book. <laughs> and I used to, you know, God, you, if I'm honest, God, you see, it all be very, like, a theory for me until I had to really call on the divine, like, hold up, I'm losing my grip here. Help. Yeah. So God became not God. Now God for you is not just nine one one. God is also four one one. And I mean, literally, I I'm wake. I have a morning routine, and I and it used to just be an hour, and I've had to you know, expand that hour to two because I need more time with just myself and God before I start today, the day because it's pure medicine for me. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Talk about your, your spiritual practice. I think it's very important. Um, so I'm also a big, I read all kind of books. Um, and so I'm, I'm reading um, Love Without Conditions right now. Um, so I try to read at night for at least 20 minutes, but in the morning I wake up before the sun. Um, I make myself some tea. That's my son playing a video game. Sorry. <laughs> um, I make myself some tea and, um, I go into my little sacred space. I light my incense. I light, um, a candle that represents light. Um, and I meditate for 10 minutes because I'm a new meditator. So 10 minutes is where I'm at with it now. Um, I also, um, I write, I free write for 30 minutes to an hour. I just write out everything I feel. I don't have, there's no structure to it. It's just whatever. No filter. No filter either. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. just write it. And then I read, um, I read a prayer. I have a prayer book that has daily prayers. And so I read a passage from that. Um, I sit in silence. I come to myself. I set an intention for the day. And then, you know, that by that time it's seven, the kids are up and I, I'm present. Right. So you're, this, is, this is really beautiful because uh, oftentimes I say that uh, people aren't just suffering from an attention deficit disorder. They're suffering from an intention deficit. Mm. They just go out into their day and they end up reacting to circumstances. Yeah. But they've had no intention for the day at all. So they have no rudder. They have no vision and they have no rudder. And I know because I used to live life like that for years, for 35 years, 34 years. You know, that was how I lived life. And it wasn't until I started the practice that I was like, oh, my God, I had so much at hand that I could have applied that I just I just didn't know. Right, right. But you do now. I do now. That's why I talk about it a lot so that 
hopefully somebody it can help someone. Right. So I know that you, you know, you, you've attended Agape. You and I have worked together. You work with my sister, Queen Afua. Yes. <laughs> we, we had a good conversation uh, recently and talked about you and just really embracing your, your, your walk. And uh, so you, you, you keep good people around you uh, as well. And I think that's another good um, quality that you have. You surround yourself with good people. Yeah, I and mean, that's a realization I just, you know, I was thinking I was in meditation the other day and I was thinking that people are either medicine or poison. Oh, speak on that. And so, um, <laughs> and, and sometimes th without any intention to be poison, but when you're around certain people and all they do is gossip or entertain themselves with, you know, a lower vibration and, you know, talking about people or, you know, negative comments and stuff like that that penetrates yeah oh and then when you're and so that's poison because then you carry that it doesn't feel good ever after long and then or if you're around someone that just talks about things that are uplifting fulfilling or just sitting in silence with someone that has really good energy that's medicine whether you are aware of it or not it brings you to like hmm, a peaceful state and so we just have to be really cautious and aware of like you know, and some of us can be poisoned sometimes to others so that we need to be aware of how we show up in others' lives as well. Absolutely. You know, there's a statement, you know, people who talk about other people, that's mediocrity. People who talk about events, that's average. And people who talk about vision and possibility, you know, that's excellence. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we want to stay away from the vibration of haters and gossipers and people who put people down. Because those individuals, they don't understand that they're actually using their word to experience the very thing that they're talking about. Because whatever comes out of your mouth is a, is a blessing or a curse. But ultimately, you experience that blessing or that curse. For sure. You said something that it, it was years ago, early on in my spiritual ascension, when I was much younger, you said, what you give, you keep. Yes. And I literally, and I know this because I'm not perfect. And there's been so many times in my life that I've been caught in low vibrational conversation. And the next day I feel it. Then right. I'm on some type of, you know what I mean? Then people right. are talking about me and I know it doesn't feel good. So it's just like, what you get out, you keep. And right. so I've, you've said that you said it years ago and it's something that I've kept with me throughout my life. Yeah, well, that's a law. You only get, you get to keep what you give away so therefore you want to give away love and peace and harmony, generosity, encouragement, kindness, compassion, patience, forgiveness. You know, you want that to flow through you because eventually you're going to get the blessing of what you're giving. And, uh, and people actually think that if they're putting somebody down or talking about somebody, they're, they're going to get away with something. But the universe is lawful. Yeah. It's a, it's a law. You're not gonna, you're not gonna sneak it out of your mouth <laughs> because you're, you know, because the, as we know now, the cells of your body are listening to you. Mm -hmm. Atoms in your body, your organs are listening to you. Mm -hmm. Your body chemistry is listening to you. So whatever's coming out, you're getting, you're getting a dose of it. So why not, why not treat yourself good by treating others good, even in your mind? See, medicine or poison. You yes, see, medicine. right? <laughs> medicine or poison. I would just like to be medicine. I'm sure, you know, in my life, I, I'm sure I've been poisoned. Uh, moving forward, I would like to just stay on my medicine tip. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I, don't, I, don't, I, wanna, I, I know you got things to do. I don't want to keep you all day, but I just, <laughs> but I could. <laughs> and I'm sure we're going to have further conversations down the line. For well, sure. As, as we leave, what do you want people to know going forward? Are there any projects, anything you want people to know that you're about that uh, they can participate in or? Yeah, I just, um, I actually just dropped a, a collaboration on a sunglass collection with Diff Eyewear. And mm -hmm. um, I, it's a charitable sunglass collection. So. Um, what does that mean? What does that mean? Charitable sunglass. Diff is a um, company that puts to the side some of the proceeds that they like the money that they get from each purchase and they give it to the, a charity. Okay. And so um, it was real intentional to work with them because I really like the idea of giving back in some way um, in all ways, actually.
And so I just dropped that collection yesterday. And oh. I'm really excited about it because I love sunglasses and I would wear them 24 seven if I could. But they were uh, my design and it was the first time that I designed sunglasses and um, I just designed what I want to wear. And so I was real like genuine with it and kept it true. So where did they go to find this on your on your Instagram or what? Yeah, the link is in my bio and but um diff eyewear dot com. And there um, you know, we got good news yesterday that a lot of them were sold out. Oh, um, very good. Look at you. Yeah. I mean it really my uh, um, You're becoming you're becoming a a, a, a hustler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned I learned from the best. Um, right. but you know, honestly, I just I think I'm I'm just real grateful that I'm able to um, create anything that anyone would respond to. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm just a girl from LA at the end of the day. And so the fact that people think that what I think is cool is cool, I'm like, that's tight. So <laughs> right. 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 I'm just humbled. Well, you know, thank you so much for stopping through and being a part of this week long, inviting people to embrace their sacred yes, yes. Uh, which you've done in the midst of calamity and in the midst of, of, of joy. And uh, oftentimes people don't see behind the scenes that, you know, you're a mother, you're raising, you're raising kids and you're embracing the next stage of your own evolution. It's not always easy, but as you've said, you, you know, you're leaning on the presence of God, the real God presence and, and, and knowing that you, you're actually here as a representative of the presence. Yeah. And that's my yeah. intention for even this live. I'm like, you know, I don't want, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be how I can just represent God and be a vessel. And I, before I go, I would like to say this, like a lot of my healing journey is inspired by my kids. I want them to see that when things happen in life that are traumatic and, you know, you don't know if you'll be able to survive it, you will. And this is, this is how, and that's why I think, you know, just my kids see me in meditation. I don't hide any of it from them. Right. So hopefully it's a roadmap for them one day when life, you know, throws them a curveball or something that they feel they won't be able to survive. That they, right. like, you know, mom did this. She was, you know. So. Right, because your kids grow to the point where they won't do what you say, but they'll do what you do. You know that that's that's the real parenting, mm -hmm. uh, being the example, because they're not gonna they're not gonna listen to you. At a certain point, they rebel but they eventually come back to what you do. Mm -hmm. I part that with my own kids in terms of their, their eating habits, in terms of their meditation, in terms mm. of being a part of agape, in terms of their, their being a part of a higher conversation. You know, they, they, they're becoming me, and they're, but not me, they're becoming them. Yeah. Right <laughs> I'm becoming my mom. I write everything down. I'm like, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> well, any last words? Thank you for inviting me to do this and giving me this opportunity. You are such a, you have been one of my master teachers and I sincerely, soulfully thank you. Well, God bless you, Lauren. It's been my joy. And we've had all the demographics and ages this week and you're a youngster. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for stepping up to the plate. and Thank you for giving us your time. Okay. As I say to all my guests, you know, one of the most valuable things that we have in life these days is time, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when you can give your time to something like this, I just, I just appreciate it. And I'll, I'll be talking to you soon. Yes, I love you so much, Rev. Thank you. I love, I love you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Right day. <laughs> Bye. Give your, give your boys my, my hug, big hug for me, okay? I will. I'm like, you can't hear them. They're like going crazy. I, I, hear, in them. Room. <laughs> I hear them. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. So everyone, uh, thank you for tuning in today. That was Lauren London. You may have known her, I mean, recently with uh, Michael B. Jordan and, and, and that movie that's on Netflix um, and uh, a, a, number, a number of things. But more importantly, uh, you know, she's, she's a woman of God, uh, a, a mother, and has gone through some dark moments in her life. But with the, the leaning on the presence until it becomes more real than anything, which is what I teach all the time, you want to lean, you want to practice until the presence becomes more real than the circumstance becomes more real than the situation, more, becomes more real than what people might be saying about you. And then you rise and you shine. So we'll see you uh, perhaps tonight, since it's Friday, 
on the community gathering on Avi's Facebook Live at 5.30 p.m. Perhaps we'll see you on Sunday. Uh, three services, 6.45 a.m. is the Way of Meditation service. 8.30 is a meditation service followed by the 9 a.m. worship service or the 11 a.m. meditation service followed by the 11.30 uh, worship service. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this, for those of you who came on late, it's not too late for you to register for the Into the Now Summit that took place on July 21st, which is my actual birthday. And it's free. It's free for the next few days. And so register, watch the summit, and then you'll have an opportunity to participate in getting the entire summit plus the first three-day summit we did and a whole lot of bonus materials uh, for a very reasonable price that will support a scholarship fund for our university and the translation fund so that we can turn these teachings into other languages. You can circulate and, and, and watch how it benefits others. So peace and radical blessings to all of you. I'll see you Sunday morning. Have a bright day. Sometimes smile and be grateful even when you don't feel like it and the universe will give you something to be grateful for. Kidoki.